Bicol University, the premier university in the Bicol region, pioneered in offering open distance education through the Bicol University, Open University. In BU Open University, in its borderless education, you can learn whenever or wherever. Even during the global health crisis brought about by the COVID-19, BU Open University remains at the fore even before. We connect islands. We bridge continents. The BU Open Distance Education Program seeks to provide wider access to quality education adhering to the highest standards of academic excellence in order to produce trained manpower required for the development of the BICO region. The program especially seeks to provide wider access to quality education by offering degree programs via the distance education mode. Establish an innovative system of continuing education of professionals and career development for those unable to avail of the opportunity through the usual traditional delivery mode and develop instructional materials and technology appropriate for distance education. We offer the following programs Doctor of Education in Educational Leadership and Management, Master of Arts in Educational Leadership and Management, Master of Arts in English Education. Master of Arts in Social Studies Education Master of Local Government Management Master in Management and Master of Public Administration At present, there is a Distance Learning Office or Center in the main campus of Bicol University at the third floor of the University Library. The DLC in the main campus is open to serve students coming from various parts of the region. To better serve a wider segment of the Bicolanos, the BU Open University intends to engage in partnership with local government units and other academic institutions in the region. Under the Administrative Order No. 347, Series of 2019, the office is manned by the Dean. The Dean is supported by core and affiliate faculty members and technical staff to serve as the link between the BUOU and the distance education students in the region or offshore. The course modules are the basic medium of instructional delivery. These are prepared by module development teams consisting of writers, readers, instructional design specialists, and language editors. This is drawn from the faculty complement of the university. The faculty in charge shall use a combination of modules, open educational resources, other internet resources, video clips, web links, and other printed materials following design course guides via synchronous and asynchronous delivery mode. The Open University, breaking barriers, connecting people to quality education from different walks of life from different parts of the country and the world. Good morning! Before we start with our orientation program, we would like to remind you of the following viewing guidelines. First, watch the student orientation broadcast in its entirety. This will ensure that you will take down all the essential information that will be presented to you in the broadcasts. Second, Avoid skipping or fast-forwarding any part of the student orientation broadcasts. This way, in connection with the first guideline, you will not miss any relevant detail pertaining to the essential information we expect you to learn from this orientation. Third, please attend to our open forum at the end of the broadcast to answer your inquiries. And finally, answer the evaluation link to be given after the open forum.
morning, ladies, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this to the students orientation for the second semester 2021-2022 brought to you by Bicol University, Open University. I am Dr. Roldan Cabiles and I'm going to be the moderator for the rest of this orientation. And to formally start, let us have the prayer and the singing of the Philippine National Anthem, which will be played after this. all in this orientation, we have our dynamic dean, the dean of Bicol University, Open University, Dr. Ramesis M. Lorino. To our university president, Dr. Arnufo M. Mascarinas. To the dean of the graduate school, Dr. Herbert Rosana. Other officials of the university. To the core affiliate faculty and professorial lecturers of the Bicol University Open University 
My dear students, guests, good morning. We are delighted to welcome you to Bicol University Open University and excited by the return of our vibrant campus life. Whether you are beginning or continuing your educational journey with us, we look forward to learning, exploring, and growing together. Throughout the pandemic, you have faced and been called on to sacrifice significant rites of passage for the greater good of public health. During this time, we have appreciated your ability to adapt to an ever-evolving situation and to find opportunities for growth amid the many changes. The 2021-2022 academic year still holds some unknowns for us in the light of the ongoing pandemic and we will all have to remain understanding and flexible amid a fluid situation. Despite the unique and flexible circumstances, we are thrilled to have you with us on campus and in the classroom virtually. At Bicol University Open University, you are part of a strong campus community that values academic excellence and diversity. Paramount to the academic achievement and excellence at Bicol University is our commitment to diversity, equity, and inclusion. As a university dedicated to educating our future contributors and leaders and learning from each other, we encourage one another to foster a, a community free of intolerance and discrimination and to promote a campus climate that is respectful, civil, supportive, and safe. These core values allow us to provide a learning environment where we can all pursue our dreams and reach our highest potential. Once again, welcome to Bicol University Open University. Thank you. As you are all pursuing graduate studies, we shall also listen to the message of the Dean of the BU Graduate School, Dr. Herbert B. Rosana. Good morning, my dear friends. Uh, I hope that all of you are doing fine today. Uh, first of all, I would like to extend my greetings to our University President, Dr. Arnulfo M. Mascariñas. And at the same time, all the Vice Presidents of Bicol University. And I would like also uh, Dr. Ramises Lorino, the Dean of the BU Open University. So to my esteemed uh, and respected colleagues at the BUOU, and most especially to our students, to our friends, our acquaintances, and to our uh, stakeholders. Thank you for inviting me to give the message, uh, inspirational message for today. And I hope that my short message will inspire you and ignite the fire that is already in you. I know that uh, we people are motivated uh, by various factors. And whether our motivations are, are better or good or whatever kind of quality of motivations we have, one thing that we need to know and to understand that uh, motivation is basic among human beings. People are moved, by, are moved by their own motivations. And I know that your coming to the BUOU is a kind of a positive motivation. And I know that you have your own plans for your lives. You have your own goals. You have set your own goals. And I know that the, uh, your education at the, the Bicol University is just one of this uh, uh, stepping stone that you have set for the goals in your life. But I would like to encourage you to make the most of your time with the BU Open University. And I am always, rem uh, I am always reminded of that uh, verse in the scripture, particularly in the Gospels, when Jesus said that... Uh, uh, as an example, he said 
that when a person has taken on the plow, he should not turn his back because if he, if he does, he will not be able to accomplish his task. Then there is also another, um, another, um, it, ano ba? another Jewish um, proverb, especially among the Jews, for example, in Europe, uh, wherein they had this uh, belief that when a person engages in scholarship, that he should not be engaged in in work. So this is not to encourage laziness, but rather what the sage was uh, trying to say uh, is that that when you engage in studies and scholarship you have to focus your attention to it and i think that this is that this is the kind of motivation that we should have because once we set our goals in life we should be relentless and we should pursue those goals come what may i know that uh, it is difficult for some filipinos because of our culture and traditions like for example when we have this uh, kind of nigas uh, nigas kugun uh, mentality nigas kugun attitude wherein at the, the start of the project we show some kind of excitement but later on as the as the work goes on the, the uh, as the normal thing goes on we lose we suddenly lose our interest and i hope that uh, we should be able to, to change that kind of attitude and that we should be able to reshape ourselves. You know, um, we human beings are unique in this world. Why? Because we are the only uh, we, we are the only creature in this world given this kind of intelligence that we have a mind, that we have uh, the free will, and that we have the capability to to set goals for our, ourselves and uh, pursue it. And we should always be thankful for that. And I hope that your stay in Bicol University, especially in the BUOU, will become uh, an enjoyable one. So take this opportunity because this is not this is a once in a lifetime opportunity to be able to have a formal education through the BU Open University. And I would like to welcome especially our new students and especially our returning students. I hope that uh, you will find your stay uh, beautiful and meaningful. And we in the graduate school, we will do our best to be able to help you. And I am not sleeping. I am not. Uh, I am not. Uh, I say, hindi ako nat nagtutulog tulugan. And I'm trying my best to be able to provide uh, the necessary support to all your studies. So we would like also. I would like also to apologize when we have some uh, forms of glitches. But uh, don't worry, because every concern that you bring into my office are addressed accordingly. Because we want to pursue that uh, culture of excellence. We want to make your stay in the BUOU meaningful so that this will help you enhance your potential, maximize your potential, so that you will become better persons, better family, family persons, better members of your community, and become also become better uh, citizens of the global community so welcome my friends and i hope that everything will be fine with your stay at uh, Bicol university open university thank you so much and uh, good day thank you dr rosana for the message of support to bu open university and now ladies and gentlemen let us welcome and listen to the message of the Bicol University President, Dr. Arnulfo E. Mascarinas, the person behind the success and institutionalization of BU Open University. Dr. Ram Lorino, Dean of the Bicol University, Open University, faculty members, graduate students, Friends, ladies and gentlemen, a pleasant day to all. I attend, therefore I am. This is a powerful dictum coined by Caroline Dicey Jennings, a professor at the University of California, Merced, as she explores the concept of attention in a context of philosophy of the mind and cognitive science. 
asserting that we are only as strong as our powers of attention. She contends that attention interacts with the other functions of the mind, such as perception, consciousness, and action. As such, attention is the foundation of the self, as what is the self if not that we space attention. In other words, what we give our attention defines our priorities. Attention is informed. Attention is making a choice. My beloved graduate students, when you enrolled in your program, you made a conscious decision to embark on a journey that demands commitment, discipline, and grit. In fact, the standing joke is getting into graduate school is relatively easy, but what is hard is getting out. And by getting out, I mean having the privilege to add your graduate degree to your name. I want you to understand that pursuing graduate school via distance education demands that you summon your powers of attention in what Jennings defines as the power to control the focus of your attention away from distractions and toward your favorite point of focus. Throughout your academic coursework day, I guarantee that there will be so many things that will vie for your attention. Personal and professional concerns, family matters, health scares, and many more attention-grabbing issues that can easily distract you from keeping your eyes fixed on your goal. But what you focus on can either bring you closer to your goal or farther away. Let me remind you that the nature of distance education can pose serious challenges to your ability to stay on your chosen track. Unlike the conventional face-to-face -face setup, distance education entails self-directed learning requiring you to be independent by practicing good organizational and time management skills in order to survive and thrive on your academic environment. My dear students, your journey may often feel like a solitary adventure, so you need to be self-disciplined and self-motivated if you want to reach your destination. Thank you for choosing Bicol University as your virtual university. We take pride in our curricular offerings and our learning management system that enable us to provide quality education in an increasingly borderless world. I urge you to keep the torch of wisdom burning by being a paragon of scholarship, leadership, service, and character as you deep out the core values of a true blue BUN. Let me also commend you for your decision to pursue further studies at a time of so much uncertainty. In the midst of global health anxieties brought about by the COVID-19 pandemic, you still chose to focus your attention on obtaining your degree, and this is an extraordinary feat worthy of adulation and praise. Amidst the cacophony of voices and sounds, distracting sights, and the many reasons why it is easy to quit graduate school. I hope you find the grit to persist in what you feel passionate about and persevere even in the midst of insurmountable odds. Again, a pleasant day to all of you. Thank you, President Mascarinas, for that message. Given the context that we are in open university, 
it is a must that the faculty members and students should know what is open and distance e-learning. And to walk us through about this topic, here is one of the core faculty members of BU Open University and Professor Six, Dr. Maria Jane B. Mascarinas. I will be giving you an overview of what is BU Open University. But first, what is open learning, distance education? Is there a legal basis to this? And what are we doing in BU Open University? So to start with, let's take a look at Pickle University, Open University, breaking barriers, connecting people to quality education. There are many forms of open education. Education for all, distance education, correspondence school, open learning, open university, virtual campus, virtual classrooms, web-based learning, e-learning, open educational resources, open research, open data, transnational and cross-border education, and many more. So let's take a look first of what is open learning. What makes open learning open? Open learning is when decisions about learning are taken by the learner himself or herself, like whether or not to learn, what to learn, how to learn, where to learn, when to learn, how to get learning assessed, and what to do next, okay? So open learning is a philosophy of learning that is learner-centered and flexible, enabling learners to learn at the time and pace which satisfies their circumstances and requirements. So therefore, open learning can be anywhere, not inside the classroom as per specified by this CHED Memo Order Number 35, Series of 2000. What is then distance education? Distance education describes a set of teaching and learning strategies or educational methods that can be used to overcome spatial and temporal separation between educators and learners. Okay, so please take note of that. There is a separation between educators and learners, which can either be by space and time. CHED, according to its Memo Order 35 series of 2000, further defines distance education as a mode of educational delivery, whereby teacher and learners are separated in time and space and instruction is delivered through specially designed materials and methods and supported by organizational and administrative structures and arrangements. Therefore, distance education is a planned educational system. It is planned so that there are specially designed materials and methods that is supposed to be delivered to the learners by the teachers and that there is an organizational structure and administrative structures and arrangements that supports it. So what is open learning and distance education? Both are alternative systems of education which emphasize the opening of opportunities by overcoming barriers that result from geographical isolation, personal or work commitments, or conventional course structures, which have often prevented people from realizing their educational goals. Again, from CHED Memo 35 of 2000. Let's take a look at the important characteristics of distance education. One major characteristic 
per definition of CHED and other literature is the separation of teacher and learner in time or place or in both time and place, okay? So given that, this illustration will show you, or this picture will show you, that the trained teacher, supposedly trained in distance education mode or open learning mode, and the student are separated, but there is a well-prepared appropriate ICT communication technologies or well-prepared designed learning packages or course packages or instructional materials and learner support systems that provide the bridge between the separation of the teacher and the learner. Okay. Likewise, there is an institutional accreditation that is learning is accredited or certified by some institution or agency. So it follows certain assessment, evaluation, quality assurance, etc. Another characteristic is the use of technical media, including print, radio and television broadcast, video and audio, cassettes, computer-based learning, and telecommunications. So you can see here, at the upper part were the old ones, and at the lower part are the new ones. This time you have the different educational platforms like Moodle, Google, Classroom, Edmodo, Schoology, etc. And even some teachers are even doing the social media. Provision of two-way communication, which allows learners and tutors to interact as distinguished from the passive receipt of broadcast signals. So it's not purely lecture, broadcast lecture. Rather, it, there is an interaction, a two-way communication, given those different uh, instructional modes presented earlier. Another characteristic is the possibility of face-to-face -face meetings for tutorials, learner-learner interaction, library study, and laboratory study or practice sessions, meaning the learning materials are well designed for a remote instruction of mode of delivery. And this keeps the learners engaged in a remote instruction mode of delivery, meaning that there should be an engagement between the learner and the teacher, okay? Again, given this presentation, you will notice that there is a connecting bridge between the teacher and the learner via the preparation of planned materials, well-prepared, appropriate uh, communication technologies, and learner or student support systems. Here are the important principles of distance education. Removal of unnecessary barriers of access to education. Those are examples of which are geographical isolation. For example, very far from Bicol University, cannot anymore take their courses. Not with distance education, they can. Discrimination on the basis of race, gender, home language, or language of learning, age or physical disability, inability to take time off work for a course. Our students are all professionals in distance education and they are all workers either part-time or full-time. Lack of appropriate qualifications, lack of funds, so these are the barriers that are removed by distance education or open learning. So we are disruptors of change. Recognition of prior learning experiences and current competencies, other important principles. There should be learner support, expectations of success and cost effectiveness. So given that, Let's take a look at the advantages of distance education. Distance education is one way of tapping and maximizing limited resources for increasing intakes in a more economical way. 
How is that? The students will not anymore be worrying about their transportation and food whenever they go to Bicol University. So, or even residing sometimes in hotels, just so to be able to attend to the following day class. They will not be worrying about those costs anymore. Reach, another advantage is to reach a wider student audience. So, in fact, in distance education, we can have uh, 100 to 100 plus or more students in one subject, provided, of course, it is given in the systems of the institution. Okay? Learners in remote locations who are unable or unwilling to physically attend a campus are still rich by distance education. Another advantage is to meet the needs of students who are unable to attend on-campus classes. This was what I've been saying. Learners engaged in full-time or part-time work, family or community commitments. Oh, so these are the very reason why they cannot sometimes proceed with their degree programs in advanced education. And these are break these are barriers that are broken by distance education. So distance education also provide opportunity for continuing professional development of graduates. Now, is there a legal basis for what we are doing in Bicol University? Everyone should be familiar with what is RA 10650, which is an act expanding access to educational services by institutionalizing open distance learning in levels of tertiary education and appropriating funds, therefore. This was approved in December 9, 2014. You can Google it if you want to look further or read further the details of the provision. But for the meantime, just for purposes of this orientation, I simply selected what is uh, important for information of the body. Section 1, the Act shall be known as the Open Distance Learning Act. And Section 3, the definition of terms. Let's take a look at how it is defined in RA 10650. Distance education is defined here as a mode of learning in which students and teachers are physically separated from each other. And that is what we are doing in distance education. It is a student-centered guided independent study, making use of well-studied teaching and learning pedagogies to deliver well-designed learning materials in various media. So therefore, this is different from the residential mode of which due to the pandemic emergen emergency or urgently jump into online learning, okay? It is a student-centered guided independent study making use of well-studied teaching and learning pedagogies to deliver well-designed learning materials in various media, okay? It is also described as flexible learning and distributed learning. Further, let's take a look at the definition. According to RA 10650, ODL is actually a combination or a marriage between the concepts of open learning and distance education. It is a system which combines the methodology of distance education with the concepts of open learning and flexible learning. So open learning refers to a philosophy of learning that is based on flexibility of access for equity in education, an educational system accessible to every individual with minimal restrictions and emphasizing the flexibility of the system to eradicate problems caused by barriers like age, geographical location, time constraints, and economic situation. With that, we now go into BU Open University. 
when was this started this was started in november this was approved by a bor resolution number 24 on november 20 1997 which approved the setting of the bu open university at that time and during that administration while the proposal that was approved was to offer degree programs it was implemented via short-term courses the objective of bu open university is to bring the curricular programs of the university to a wider populace of students through the establishment of distance learning centers across the region okay so this time with present technology and the changes in educational landscape this distance learning center has to be revisited so it was only in 2004 that an admin order number 177 was done to provide the general implementing guidelines for the operation of bu open university and so in nine in second sem of 2005 BU Open University was able to took off with three initial programs in the graduate school. That's why it is lodged in the graduate school. The general objective of BU Open University six is to, is to provide wider access to quality education, adhering to the highest standards of academic excellence, in order to produce trained manpower required for the development of Bicol region. But we went beyond that. Initially, the objective is to provide the train to produce trained manpower required for the development of Bicol region. But as we implemented, as we opened the BU Open University, other students coming from outside the region, Batangas, Laguna, Leyte, Samar, are coming in to enroll in this mode of education. And then, now, after that, so we are serving other parts of the country, not just the region, this time, we have offshore students, not just this time, in the past uh, five years, I think. We have, we have offshore students. And even at the very start of BU Open University, we have one graduate from Saudi Arabia, the very first graduate of BU Open University. So specific objectives of BU Open University are as follows, and they are three major objectives. One, to provide wider access to quality education by offering degree programs via the distance education mode. Establish an innovative system of continuing education of professionals and career development for those unable to avail the opportunity through the usual traditional, conventional, or the residential delivery mode. Okay? and develop instructional materials and technology appropriate for distance education. So how is the mode of instructional delivery? We started with course modules. The basic medium of instruction delivery that we do before. And these are prepared by faculty in charge and other source open educational resources or web-based materials okay now this time you have a lot of web based or web link materials that can be found in any particular field of discipline so how do we do it there are two approaches synchronous and asynchronous when we say synchronous same the people are in the same place at the same time. If it is online, the people are in different place, but at the same time. Okay. So, per observation, the residential courses are doing synchronous. 
approach in flexible learning as in every schedule per week they are on uh, synchronous mode delivering the lectures to the students or the students providing the reports at the same time which may be in different places okay so they are using uh, technology while the other one is asynchronous which is in a different time same place but in a different time okay or in a different place and different time that is online so distance education uses both synchronous and asynchronous but most often in as much as the materials are ready and are the course packages are already prepared by the FICs what we are doing in distance education are mostly asynchronous given the very nature of distance education okay so let's take a look at what are those that can be asynchronous and those that can be synchronous Asynchronous could be discussion boards, quizzes, polls, email, digital documents, recorded audio or video, recorded slides with narration, self-paced courses because the students are self-learning and self-independent. Okay? So, synchronous on one hand are the virtual classrooms, the live presentations, the ongoing lectures, the live text chat, instant messaging, live audio or video chat, live quizzes or live polling. So that's the difference between asynchronous and synchronous. Okay. So what is the mode of instructional delivery in BU Open University following RA 10650? One, the actual delivery of these courses or these modules is taken care of by faculty in charge and tutors. Now, in open university or distance education, the professors are called faculty in charge. Why? Because they are not supposed to teach in front of the students. They are not supposed to give lectures every meeting, but rather they facilitate learnings of the students as self-learners and independent learners, okay? So they are more on facilitation and attending to the course modules that are to be handled in a particular course. The faculty in charge and tutors are the same person. Each subject or course has an FIC or a course supervisor who ensures the attainment of the objectives of the course and who rates or evaluates the performance of distance education students. So, I hope you see the difference now of what is distance education and the online uh, teaching that is happening now given the pandemic. Performance of students enrolled in distance education mode is assessed through required faculty mark assignments tutor mark assignments, exercises and activities, final term papers, or even proposals for research and supervised examinations, which can be on-site or online. Before we do it on-site, this time it is online. Just to give you a snapshot of what we do before in distance education, prior to the pandemic, there is a face-to-face meeting for the first meeting and orientation of the students in open university in bu open university so you can see here the fic's having a face-to-face -face meeting or orientation with their respective classes because it, there is a general orientation for all open university students which is a must in distance education and uh at least an orientation via respective classes that will follow after that immediately 
that was the practice before pandemic. Okay, so the mode of instructional delivery. Ah, sorry. Okay, so here is another snapshot where you can see that the first meeting is actually the orientation with the students about the delivery mode because it's different from the residential. And the examinations were on site then at that time prior to the pandemic. You can see that in this picture. So the mode of instructional delivery, tutorial sessions are part of the course delivery system of the Open University or distance education mode, which are designed to facilitate clarification of topics, issues, and ensure informed discussion among module users, okay? So the tutorial sessions are not actually lecture sessions. These are just clarification of issues or topics or further guidance to the students that were not taken up in their uh, modular or web-based materials. Tutorial sessions at least once a month or depending on students' needs, particularly for some subjects such as research, statistics, qualitative, quantitative research, there is a need for tutorial sessions and for other major subjects that will depend on the student and the teacher. The tutors are the FIC themselves, which facilitates this tutorial session. Now, that is the flexibility in distance education. Okay, so this time, the pandemic time, everything is online for orientation. And just like this orientation now, it is virtual tutorial session, consultations are virtual. Now, who are the target clientele of distance education? It is designed for those who have difficulty attending the traditional residential mode of instructional delivery due to inadequate time, busy work schedule, distance and other physical barriers, and inadequate financial resources. As I've mentioned now, we have a lot of offshore students. Therefore, these barriers are already removed. It is designed for mature learners who have the capacity to undergo independent self-learning, okay? So it's not a spoon-feeding lecture type. Self-motivated individuals who have the desire for self-advancement. Okay, so these are the target clientele of distance education. Now, before I, I end, let me share this to you. Just a certain thought to be shared. According to Sandar Pechai, a CEO of Google, technology alone will not improve education, but it can be a powerful part of the solution. Okay. Another one, according to Alvin Toffler, an American futurist, writer, and businessman, he says, and this is very famous now, the illiterate of the 21st century will not be those who cannot read and write, but those who cannot learn, unlearn, and relearn. With that, let me ask you, what do you think will be the university or the classroom of the future? Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Mascarinas, for comprehensively presenting to us a discussion on open and distance e-learning. The next one would be the orientation on academic policies, particularly in Open University. And to give us the details, here is the Academic Program Coordinator of BU Open University, Dr. Emily M. Agonos. Good day, everyone. I will be sharing with you important academic policy for Bicol University Open University. Please allow me to share a screen. Let us start with the organizational structure. 
On top is the Board of Regents, represented by the President, Dr. Arnulfo Mascarinas, and with him are the four Vice Presidents. The Dean heads the BU Open University with the four coordinators for academic programs, gender development, student affairs and services, and academic support. The program advisors are being led by the academic program coordinator, and we have the core faculty complemented by the affiliate faculty and professorial lecturers. Currently, we are offering seven programs out of the 22 programs approved by the Board of Regents. For the program advisor in Doctor of Education in Educational Leadership, we have Dr. Melinda de Guzman, Master in Local Government and Management, Dr. Ramon de Leon, Master in Management, Dr. Emily Agonos, and for Master of Public Administration, Dr. Ramses Lorino. For the Master of Arts in Educational Leadership and Management, we also have Dr. Melinda de Guzman, for English Education, Dr. Roldan Cabiles, and for Social Studies Education, we have Professor Jose Carlo Lavapie. Let's meet the core faculty of the BOU, starting with the Academic Program Coordinator, who will be the FIC for MMOU 210, MMOU 212, MPA 212, and EDDM 317. The God Coordinator in the person of Dr. De Guzman she will be handling EDDM 314, 316, and also MAELM 210. The Research and Extension Coordinator, Dr. De Leon, will be the FIC for MLGM 210, 211, 212, and MMOU 214. And we have a, a senior graduate faculty of the BOU, Dr. Maria Jane Mascarinas, who will be handling EDDM 300, 305, MA 200, MA Soxted 200 and 203, as well as PhD and EDD 301. We also have Dr. Roldan Cabiles, who is likewise the document controller of BOU. He will be handling Maeng Ed 211 and 213, as well as MPA 220. And Professor Lavapie, as the Student Affairs and Services Coordinator, will be handling MLGM 213, MPA 212, 213, 214, and 215. And we have Professor Monte Alegre, who is the Academic Support Coordinator, and he is the Administrator of the BUOU LMS, or Learning Management System. We have here the affiliate faculty, starting with Dr. Luis Amano, the FIC for Statistics, Professor Maria Elma Mirandilla for research methods. And we also have Dr. Reina Habalo, the FIC for academic governance and administration, as well as management of academic institutions. We also have with us Dr. Maria Julieta Bores, the FIC for seminar in Philippine laws, legal history, and social legislation. Likewise, we have Dr. Marcia Corazon Rico, the FIC for Curriculum Development and Teaching Studies. We also have Dr. Renilin Bautista, FIC for Theories and Practices of Writing. Dr. Benedicto Balilo will be handling Management Information System. And Dr. Imelda Asuncion Barce, the FIC for Public Policy and Program Administration. We have one professorial lecturer in the person of Dr. Hermelita Antibola, who will be handling statistical methods. And we, we, have, uh, we have the support staff of the BOU, Mel Angelo Balisbis. And don't forget our dean is Dr. Ramesis M. Lorino and the sub-president of Bicol University, Dr. Arnulfo Mascarinas. Let us now talk about the academic track for the master's program. The, min the minimum number of units is 30, and the coursework is equivalent to 24 units with foundation, major, and cognate courses, and six units will be for thesis writing. And of course, one needs to pass a comprehensive examination, submit a thesis, 
and publish an article in a record journal or submit a juried creative work. For the doctorate level, the total number of units is 60. For foundation courses, you have to earn 18 units, major courses 24, and the cognate will be 6 units. Similar to the master's degree, you have to pass a comprehensive exam, publicly defend a practice-based dissertation, meaning to say, your paper requires mastery of the subject and techniques of a professional field directed towards distinguished practical performance. I'm sure most of you are aware about the admission requirements. One needs to be uh, a holder of appropriate bachelor's degree or master's degree in the case of doctoral program. And there is a requirement for a general weighted average of 2.2 for the master's program and 1.7 or its equivalent for applicants in the doctoral program. And there should be uh, the appropriateness of previous degree earned as vertically articulated to the graduate program applied for and relatedness of work experiences and your ability to conduct research. For admission classification, we have two. One is regular admission, meaning to say your academic records and supporting documents indicate that you are qualified to undertake graduate study in your chosen field. And you can also be admitted on probationary status, meaning to say there is, uh, there is a deficiency in your academic records and supporting documents, but you are showing a promise of success in the graduate study. Please take note that an applicant admitted on probationary status must meet the specific requirements prescribed by the program advisor before your probationary status can be changed to regular status. And an applicant who fails to meet the terms of your probationary status will automatically be disqualified from pursuing your intended program of study. For the admission requirements, don't forget your official transcript of records, photocopy of special order, copy of your honorable dismissal, payment of admission fee and letters of recommendation, as well as your birth certificate. Please don't forget that since you applied via online, you are required to submit all the documents, original documents to the registrar. For the registration, an applicant may be admitted to any program and you have to register only when you present letter of admission issued by the Office of the Dean of the Graduate School and you may carry the regular load of 12 units in a semester. For BU Open University, we do not have mid-year classes. Students on probationary status, please take note of this, may be allowed to register the following term after completing nine units of coursework with a general weighted average of two and upon submission of an approved change of status from probationary to regular, that will be issued by the Office of the Dean of the Graduate School. For the residence requirement and time limit, there is a maximum of five years and seven years of actual residence from the start of your graduate work that will be allowed for the fulfillment of all requirements for the master's degree and doctoral degree, respectively. The application for leave of absence shall state the reasons for the leave and shall specify the period, which in no case shall exceed one academic year, subject to renewal for, for very meritorious reasons. The total leave time in the degree program must not exceed two years. In terms of the coursework requirement, a graduate student within his or her first semester of residence must prepare a plan of coursework considering the prescribed residence period for a degree and that the registrar shall be furnished a copy of your approved plan of coursework. Now let's talk about how you will designate your thesis or dissertation advisor. 
some of the qualifications include a graduate faculty must be a doctoral degree holder, must have completed and has an ongoing research or creative work, and must have published work in internationally or nationally indexed journals, and must have been an advisor for at least three students in the undergraduate and for doctoral advisors at least five in the ad undergraduate thesis, as well as for master's advisor. Now let's proceed to the grading system. The university shall have a uniform grading system using number grades from one to five, where one is the highest, three is the lowest passing grade, and five is failure. A grade of four is conditional and can only be given as a midterm grade. An IMC or incomplete grade indicates incomplete coursework. An INC obtained from the previous semester must be completed within a year. Otherwise, it will be converted to a failing grade automatically in the online registration system. The passing grade in the graduate school is 3.0, but the graduate student has to maintain a GWA of 2 or better to be allowed to take the comprehensive examination. A student who incurred a failing grade in his or her coursework may be allowed to retake the course once, subject to the provisions of the approved coursework and the residence rule. For the comprehensive examination, after completing all the academic requirements with a GWA of two or better, the student shall submit an application for the compre exam duly signed by the advisory committee, recommended by the department chair, and endorsed by the secretary of the graduate school for approval of the dean. On your first attempt, the student shall be given another chance to take the comprehensive examination not earlier than one month, but not later than one year after the first exam. Failure to pass the re-examination disqualifies the student permanently from earning the degree. After earning at least 12 units of your coursework with graduate credit, the student may be allowed to enroll and work on your thesis or dissertation. The student may enroll a fraction of thesis dissertation as follows. For the thesis, you can enroll three units per semester or two units for, for three semesters. For the dissertation, which is equivalent to 12 units, you can enroll in three consecutive semesters for four units or four semesters with three units per sem. A graduate student who registered all the prescribed units for the thesis or dissertation and still unable to finish you're working on your paper, can enroll in the succeeding semester on residence subject to the policy on maximum residence of the program. All students enrolled in thesis or dissertation shall report to your respective advisor for consultation. So there will be no Google Classroom to be created for those who are taking thesis or dissertation writing. Please do not forget that the topics should be in line with your field of specialization. Let's, let's proceed to the graduation requirements. Completion of all academic courses towards your degree, passing the written or oral comprehensive examination, passing your final oral defense, submission of approved three bound copies of the manuscript, copy of published journal article, payment of graduation and other fees, and presentation of university clearance. You will observe that I have presented new academic policies which were taken from the approved 2021 policies, rules, and procedures for graduate students stud studies in Bicol University. So we are encouraging those who are uh, taking up thesis or dissertation writing to try to focus on working on your paper because anytime soon an administrative order will be issued 
for the full implementation of these academic policies. This is your academic program coordinator, Dr. Emily Agonas, saying, Diyos mabalos po sa Sendo Gabos. Thank you, Dr. Agonos, for the academic policies presented. And now we are also joined by the Coordinator for Student Affairs and Services. We have Professor Jose Carlo Labapie. To our dear President, Dr. Arnulfo Mascarinius, the Vice President for Academic Affairs, Dr. Amelia De Rosan, the Dean of BU Open University, Dr. Ramis Sandorino, Dean of the Graduate School, Dr. Herbert Rosana, the core and affiliate faculty of BU Open University. Our dear students, friends, good morning. My task here this morning is to orient you about the student affairs and services of BU Open University. The main task of this office is to move the university closer to you, though virtual, the experiential presence of a student in a campus. It is quite a challenge, but we are moving buyers one step at a time. We have introduced the ICAPIAN last September with the prime goal of creating a lived school experience. Now, there are two main services being offered by OSAS. They are the Student Welfare Services and Student Development Services. The Student Welfare Services refers to the basic service and programs needed to ensure and promote the well-being of students. Under this is the Information and Orientation Services. On this, we have our official BUOU Facebook page. There, you can message us directly regarding your general concerns. With regards to specific concerns and internal information, we usually cascade this information to your specific group chats, Facebook page of each program through your program advisors. We also have virtual bulletin boards in our Google Classroom and Mood Learning LMS through Student Launch. With regards to the guidance and counseling, we have Dr. Ben Ginebras as our guidance counselor. You may contact him or me so I can schedule you an appointment to our guidance counselor. Second major service of OSAS is Student Development Services. There are four major functions. One is student activities. This is to supervise, recognize, and monitor the different program organizations. Second is the student organizations and activities, wherein we accredit, monitor, and evaluate activities. Third is the leadership training, which we plan to conduct this September. And last is to maintain and advise the BOU Student Council. Our Student Council started its existence last August last year, and I commend the effort of all officers through the leadership of our President, President August Augusto, that this council be established. It is a pleasure working with you guys with a goal to serve our students. Thank you very much and happy to serve you. Good day. Thank you very much, Sir Carlo. Coupled with the presentation of Professor Lavapie, the Student Council, through its president, would like to present the role of Student Council in BO Open University community. It will be presented by the president himself, Mr. Don August Delgado. Sir? Good day, everyone. I'm Don August Delgado and currently the president of the BUOU Student Council for this year, 2021-2022.
My presentation for today's event is all about the role of the Council in the BUOU community. For everyone's information, it is only in this school year that BUOU established its Student Council and since it is new, the Council has to be recognized first by the University to make it official. So all the Council members tried their best effort despite of their busy schedules to come up with our Constitution and bylaws that will serve as the Council's guiding light and key to be recognized by the Office of Student Affairs and Services. And the recognition happened on the 5th of November 2021. So the approved CBL has 16 pages with 16 articles. It was not approved in the beginning, but after inclusion, of all the comments and the suggestions of the Dean of OSAS, the approval has been awarded after it was re-evaluated. The members of the BUOU Student Council come from all the programs offered by BUOU. All of the members of the Council were nominated and elected during the election day set by the BUOU Student Affairs Coordinator, Mr. Jose Carlo Labapie, who also serves as the Council's advisor. As the Supreme Student Council in BUOU, it is highlighted in the general provisions of the CBL that it is the highest governing body of the BUOU students, which means that the Council can never be superseded by any other organization in BUOU. The Student Council is actually encouraging all other majors to form their programs organization like some BUOU programs that have been created and recognized by the OSAS. So the Council has been organized not just for compliance but to be an avenue for all students to address their ideas and opinions as well as their grievances in order to make BUOU students' life a memorable experience during the duration of being a BUOU student. So in addition, BUOUSC is tasked to create activities that all of us can participate even if we do everything online. And we will make it sure that our different geographic locations will never be a hurdle to perform what is ought to be learned and done. And in order for the Council to support its future programs and activities, we are permitted to collect 100 pesos every semester that will serve as our general fund. So very soon, every class treasurer will collect 100 pesos in their respective classes that all of us have to comply. The general fund that will be collected will serve as the council source of fund for our future endeavors and which will also serve as the starting fund of the future set of officers very soon. So all of the decisions of the Council, recent or in the future, will always be based on the majority of votes. Hence, any activity or program not contradictory to the Council CBL and where the Council is asked to participate has to be agreed upon by majority, if not all members of the Council who are present in the meeting. Rest assured that any particular activity or program presented to all of you and will be spearheaded by BUOUSC underwent the process of deliberation in the Council. So lastly, 
uh, during the 24th founding anniversary, this polo shirt has been offered to everyone. To those who are willing to order this shirt, this is still available, but not for too long. Because we make orders in bulk, and since the shop is still in the process of making the rest of the orders, you can still make your order. And to those who are new this semester, this shirt costs 500 pesos, excluding the delivery fee. So if you want to order, please ask your class treasurer. Thank you everyone and may all of us have a good semester. Thank you very much Sir Don and that ends the first part of our orientation. We would like to thank our resource persons and presenters for giving us your time and expertise. Let's proceed to the next phase of this orientation which will be the presentation of the different services in Bicol University. Let's begin with the library system. Hi everyone and good day to our students and faculty. It's a new semester again and we're excited to acquaint you about the library's resources and services. On behalf of Ms. Glenda Aurora Holianda, our OIC and all the staff of the University Library, welcome and we hope that everyone is doing well and safe as you continue or start your academic journey in Bicol University. I am Laila Bellardo, your Reference and Information Services Librarian of the University Library. This virtual orientation will basically cover our resources, services, and the library policies under this new normal. The University Library is physically located at the back of the BU Grandstand and beside the University Clinic. Aside from the University Library, we have seven other college libraries situated in the colleges and satellite campuses, namely College of Law, Health Sciences, Tabaco Campus, East Campus, Bulangi Campus, College of Agriculture and Forestry, and Gubat Campus Libraries. We are open Monday to Friday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. We currently accommodate researchers by batch since seats are limited. Researchers can choose among these three schedules, 8 a.m. to 11 a.m., 11 a.m. to 2 p.m., and 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. We are closed during Saturdays for disinfection, on Sundays, and during holidays. The library is open for free to all currently enrolled BU students. We do not require a library card because we will be using the BU ID later on. For now, you may present the hard copy or e-copy of your certificate of registration for the current semester. We would like to ask all students, especially our new students, to fill up the online patron record form available at tinyurl.com slash ulpatronrecord so we can update or add your details in our patron database. The library houses a collection of print books, theses and dissertation, and journals. We also have electronic resources in the form of open access and subscription-based ebooks and e-journals. The gateway to the list of books, thesis, and dissertation available at the library is our online public access, access catalog or OPAC. It is accessible on the web through the link shown on this slide. The OPAC is very user-friendly and does not require a password. At the home page, you may choose a field and type a keyword or the topic of your research. For further instructions, you may go to our YouTube channel for an instruction on how to navigate the OPAC even at the comfort of your homes. The library has a current subscription to an online database called Gale Academic One File. 
This database includes articles from peer-reviewed journals with full text and citations, which can be downloaded for free. Shown here is the URL or link. It's um, https colon double slash link dot gale dot com slash apps slash menu question mark u equals php call. The Academic One File Database is also houses our current subscription of 91 ebooks. These ebooks can also be downloaded for free. The home page of the Academic One File Database is shown on this slide. You will be asked to type in the institutional password, and to get the password, you have to send us a message through our contact details, which I will mention in the next slides. Um, the remote access password for this database is given by request since this is exclusively for academic research use of our BU students and personnel. You can also go to our YouTube channel to view the instruction video on how to use this database. We also curate open access resources from reputable sources on the web and other libraries. These are shared and posted in our social media platforms and website. At the start of the opening of classes last August 2020, the library provided the following services in addition to our traditional services. We now have the online Ask a Librarian, online book reservation, requests for document scanning, provision of links to e-resources, and online seat reservation for on-site research. Our reference and information services is available online. You can talk to our reference librarian through Facebook, email, or text. And also, you can send your questions or requests any time of the day, but please expect a response from us during office hours. To reserve a book, you can browse our OPA, then fill up the Ask Risa form which is available through this link, tinyurl.com slash askrisa. Wait for our librarian to respond to your query and a confirmation message when the books can be personally picked up at the library. Enrolled graduate students can borrow a maximum of two books at a time. Foreign and Filipiniana general circulation books can be borrowed for one week, while unpublished materials such as our thesis and dissertation are strictly for browsing only within the library. Books may be renewed once by sending us a message on or before the due date. Books that you borrowed and taken home should be returned on time to avoid paying fines. Fines is our uh, 5 pesos per hour after 3 p.m. on your due date, and students with accountabilities are listed in our online student clearance system or OSCS. If you need to do research physically at the university library, you can make a seat reservation using this link to our uh, online Google form, tinyurl.com slash reservation. BU students can also go as walk-in, but we recommend booking an appointment so you can be given priority since seats are limited to comply with social distancing protocols. Please do send your reservation at least one to two days before your intended day of visit and during library hours, Monday to Friday. Requests that were submitted after office hours, during weekends, or holidays will be responded to on the next working day. Also, we do not accommodate on-the-day reservations. Otherwise, um, you can go as to the library as walk-in researcher. The document scanning service applies to books, print journals, and thesis and dissertation. The normal extract limit, meaning the maximum pages that we can scan, and sent to you pursuant to fair use are 20 pages or 10% of the total number of pages, whichever is higher for books, 
for printed journals up to one article from one printed journal issue or 10% of the total number of pages of that journal, whichever is higher, while for thesis and dissertation, since they are unpublished materials, we can only scan the abstract page unless you have an authorization from the author. For purposes of library clearance, the only requirement is that you should not have an accountability with the library. To request for clearance on-site, you won't need an appointment. You can also request for e-clearance by sending us a PDF copy of your clearance form through our email at bu-library at bicol-u.ph. If you need to go to the library of other schools, you can also request for a referral letter from the library. This is given to you free, but you must be enrolled for the current semester. Send us a message through email or Facebook if you need an e-referral letter. These are where you can primarily find us online. Please add us as, as, as a friend in our FB profile page. It's Aklatang Universidad ng Bicol. Like and follow our fan page, Bicol University Library. And you could also subscribe to our YouTube channel at Bicol University Library System. After this orientation, we hope you can find time to help us improve our services by answering our library orientation evaluation online form available at this link, tinyurl.com slash library orientation evaluation UL. Here is a summary of the important links to our online forms. Um, we have our Ask Lisa for book reservation and document scanning, the link to request for the database password, for seat reservation, and for patron record. Also, we have an online form for our client satisfaction survey, and when you want to recommend books or ebooks, you can use the book request form or the ebook request form. We also have our new website. The URL is sites.google.com slash bicol-u.edu.ph slash b-u-l-s. This is a one-stop source of all the information about the library system. Please do check this out. Well, this ends our virtual library orientation. Again, in behalf of the librarians and paraprofessional staff of the BU Library System, welcome to Bicol University and thank you for listening. Please keep safe, everyone. Thank you very much. The Registrar's Office
Health Services. Welcome to Biko University Health Services. Bicol University Health Services, presenting the health services personnel. The OIC of Bicol University Health Services and Dentist too. The visiting physicians. The dentist one and dental aid. Campus Clinic. The nurses at East Campus Clinic. The nurses at Bukap Campus Clinic. The nurses at Polangi Campus Clinic. The nurses at Tobacco Campus Clinic. And the nurse at Bubat Campus Clinic. health services in the new normal Palo safety and health protocols. Bicol University Health Services offered medical and dental services. Medical services offered the following. First, conduct a physical health examination, giving attention to daily consultations and treatments, issuance of medical certificates, giving attention to emergency cases, making referrals of special cases to proper authorities, conduct of lectures, counseling on management of illness, and lastly, establishments of linkages among other health agencies. Dental services offered the following. First, conduct of annual dental examination for elementary, high school, senior high school students, giving attention to dental consultations and treatments, performance of oral prophylaxis, performance of dental extractions, making referrals of special cases to proper authorities, conduct of chair side instructions for lectures, and lastly, issuance of dental certificates. Here's the requirements to avail the services. The university card for the certificate of registrations. Posted here the clinic schedule from Monday to Friday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m.
Aiden Services. To the university officials who are here today, to the BU Open University Academic Community under the deanship of Dr. Ramses Lorino, students, parents, and guests, Diyos marahay na aldaw po si Gabos. Welcome to Bicol University, your next home and pride. We are happy and excited to be with you in the coming days, facilitating, helping, and guiding you to be the torch bearer of the four pillars of the university, leadership, scholarship, character, and service. This will guide and prepare you in facing the realities of life where your character, actions, discipline, and intellect will be further developed and challenged. You are blessed to be with us here at Bicol University because you have chosen the premier state university in Bicol region that offers quality advanced education at your doorsteps. With the way on the delivery of your learning courses, you have the opportunity to make your own directions. But the great thing is you have the chance to be more responsible, learn new things, acquire new knowledge, develop new skills, and be able to enhance your personal attributes in profound ways that will provide you a well-rounded personality even after your life in the university. What are the things you will be taking charge with your present situation and the kind of the learning delivery at the Open University. 1. Managing your time well. Life in the Open University can be more complicated. Being an OU student already comes with its own challenges. However, you are now facing additional challenges with most, if not all of your classes being put online, which means shifting of learning space from public space to personal space, with the initial transition from on-campus classroom that you have known to virtual classroom, your typical morning will change. You now find yourself at home getting ready to sit behind the screen all day. It is certainly a change for having to wake up, get ready, and walk to class, develop a routine. This is the key. When you were on campus and attending classes, your routine revolved around going to classes in person. Now, since that you are an OU student, you're studying from home. It's a vital to establish a new routine and stick to it. Continue to structure your life around your coursework. Establish a new. Understand this and you can adapt it. Number two. Handling your social life appropriately. Bacall University is a very big institution which means a very big and new social scene for you. You are bound to test your social and emotional flexibility in meeting new people who came from different places. They are with different backgrounds, views, interests, and perspectives. They might also be different to you, but you have to embrace that the difference and understand everybody is unique. With the kind of the learning delivery, you will also be experiencing a shift in your social interaction from physical to virtual. This is not a social cut from the learning community, but you need to shift from your communication channels. Surround yourself with good support group. You can create or join, join a study group by a chat room. 3. Practice mindfulness. It is being totally present in the moment, non-judgmentally open and accepting. Be reminded that worried fears and anxiety are all in the minds, as quoted, quoted by Glenn Turner. Wor worrying is like sitting in a rocking chair. It gives you something to do, but it gets you nowhere. So, if you want to enjoy your university life and be successful someday, live with mindfulness. Maintain your inner peace and see the beauty of life every day. You can do this by setting up a conclusive place for studying in your home or when attending online classes. This will help you to be more concentrated if motivated in welcoming new knowledge. Likewise, be more active in interacting with your classmates and professors virtually. And the last one, ask help and support. 
as we navigate through this complicated situation, the university is committed to do what is necessary to ensure that you receive the support to achieve your academic goals and objectives. None of this will be overly easy, but it is just has to be taken one step at a time. Know that there are support services available for you. We have guidance offices in various colleges ready to assist you. There are registered guidance counselors and faculty in charge assigned. And I am your faculty in charge for guidance at the Open University. Finally, stay safe, stay connected, stay on track. On behalf of the Office of Student Affairs and Services, our warmest congratulations and welcome. Jos Mabalus po sa Indugabos. The Gender and Development or good morning to each and every one. I am tasked to discuss the gender and development of BU Open University. I am Dr. Melinda de Guzman, the God Coordinator of BU Open University. As a backgrounder, the BU Center for Gender and Development created through the mandate and vision, mission, and objectives through the approval of the BUBOR Resolution Number 093 Series of 2016. Before I discuss a gender, I am going to define first sex. Sex is what is biologically assigned to an individual, while gender is what a person identifies himself or herself. And gender is not binary, it is a spectrum. And what is sex? Sex refers to the two categories of being male and female, needed for the act of mating to result in biological reproduction. Biologically determined external genitalia or sex organ, chromosomal makeup, qualities of hormones, constant across time, across different societies and cultures. Sex is also generally permanent, universal. It categorizes as male and female, and attributes are equally valued. And what is sex roles? A function in which a male or a female assumes because of the basic physiological or anatomical difference between the sexes. A role which can be only be performed by only one of the sexes, be it a male or a female. And sex roles of male and a female is female sex roles produces lactation, gestation, and childbearing, while for the male sex roles, there is ovum fertilization that produces spermatozoa, which determines a child. And what is a gender? A gender is sociologically constructed. A changing time and place bound present in both women and men, categorized as feminine and masculine. Attributes are marked by inequality. And gender refers to and values assigned by culture and society to women and men. It is also a set of qualities, differentiated roles or responsibilities and attitudes. Gender refers to and expectations held about the characteristics, attitudes, and likely behaviors of both women and men. For this, you can distinguish the behavior of both 
women, and men. And gender roles is a set of social and behavioral norms that are not generally considered appropriate for either a man or a woman in a social or interpersonal relationship. If you can see this diagram, the gender roles result in gender biases. And the circle, the personal, and the upper one is the violence. And then we have the marginalization, the subordination, the gender stereotyping, and the multiple burden. So in the manifestation of gender bias, the marginalization is the subordination, the multiple burden is the gender stereotyping, and the violence against women is the obstacle to personal development. What are the gender biases for women? We have economic marginalization. Another one is political subordination of women. Another is the gender stereotyping. We have the multiple burden, the violence against women, and the personhood development. So all of these are gender biases in women. Stereotypes are generalizations or assumptions that people make about the characteristics of all members of a group based on an image or often wrong. According to Malala, I raise my voice not so I can shout, but so that those without voice can be heard. We cannot succeed when half of us are held back. So in the gender roles, there is the what we call conditioning. Conditioning as a child, boys get toys like truck, guns, and superheroes. So you can easily identify that a child is a boy once they play a truck, a guns, and superheroes. While the girls are given dolls and cooking sets. So that is a very common play of a girls, the dolls and cooking sets. In this conditioning, manipulates young minds into believing that they must act within their given place in the society. What are the challenges here? Girls who do not conform to stereotypical expectations can experience criticism, ostracism, and even violence. This also puts unwarranted pressure on boys who love to read, dislike fighting, or dislike sports or mecha mechanics, and gender equality benefits both boys and girls. And what are these benefits? Allow boys to express their emotions, encourage them to be expressive, involve them in activities like gardening and cooking. While girls exposed to role models of women in business, especially those outside the stereotype like doctors, scientists, businesswomen, and leaders. These role models will help girls to see themselves in professions outside the normal stereotypes. And gender sensitivity is the act of being sensitive to the ways people that think about gender. People rely less assumed and gender sensitivity tries to ensure option about traditional and outdated views on the roles of men and women. There is also the what we call language matters, and gender sensitivity often gets expressed through people's language choice. Especially this time, very prominent ang ating language choice. We can choose more inclusive language and use words that are gender neutral. Sexism in language, the use of language with devalues members of one sex, almost invariably women, thus foster gender inequality. Example, the use of the genetic masculine. Subsuming all humanity in terms of men 
father, brother, and master. Sexism in language terms ending in men to refer to functions that may be performed by individuals of either sex. And gender discriminatory words are not innocent by making women non-apparent. Society will see them as possessing less value. And gender equality benefits both men and women by giving them wider choice. And now, my dear students and faculty, what will be now the role and participation of students and faculty in gender and development in the Open University? First, we have this university-wide National Women's Month celebration this coming March. And we have this participation of faculty and students on the webinar on the role of BU Open University faculty women in the new normal during the Women's Month. This will be held on the last Saturday of March 2022. There is the participation of faculty and students during the launching of BU Open University God Corner. This is one of the mandate of the Center for Gender and Development so that the faculty and students have the space to rest and relax during free hours. And of course, the participation and collaboration with Gender and Development for BU Graduate School, BU Open University, and BU IPSR with the different activities like the extension and the webinar. With that, my dear students, faculty, thank you so much for listening. God bless us all. However, according to Michelle Obama, no country can ever truly flourish if it stifles the potential of its women and deprives itself on the contribution of half its citizens. Thank you so much. The, the Information, Communication, and Technology Office. Good day. This is Aris Ordonez, the Director of the ICT Office of Bicol University. I would like to take this opportunity to welcome everybody to Bicol University. This pandemic may have brought all of us to a halt make disruptions to our way of life and makes us miss most of the things that we love doing for the moment. Education, however, must not stop. Beacon University will continue delivering quality education along with each other services regardless of the situation. Hard as it may seem, our office is committed to provide the necessary services along information and communication technology to bring everybody together, provide the necessary support to make education possible amidst restrictions, and allow you to make your stay in the university to be as substantial, memorable, and enjoyable as possible. Our office will provide the necessary avenue using information technology as a tool, as a bridge, and as a method as you take on your journey as students of Bicol University vying for your academic degrees. For you to better understand the function of the ICT office and the services that it provides, let us all take a look at this. The Student Center is the portal of every BUENO to the online services of the university. It covers access to the enrollment process, viewing of grades, student schedule, requests for transcript of records and other student documents, and faculty evaluation. To access the Student Center, open the Bicol University website, scroll to the bottom and click on the link that says my.bicol-u student portal. The next screen will show the different access links to the system. Choose any server to access the application. Login using your student number and password to access its offered services. Once inside the system, students can view their grades, self-enroll, and evaluate their respective professors. Bicol University, through its affiliation with Google, allow students to utilize the services of Google by using their university-assigned email addresses. Simply log into Google using the student's email address and start using all of its applications. This includes 
Email, Google Classroom, Google Drive, Hangout, Meet, Jamboard, and all of the Google Office applications such as Google Docs, Google Slides, Google Sheets, and Google Form. To access the University Learning Management System, simply scroll down to the bottom of the BU website and click on the BU-LMS link to access the application. Your email addresses will also be your login credentials to access the LMS. Some students may tend to forget their login information to their email in LMS. The ICT office provides assistance for the students by simply accessing the Google form provided to indicate their requests for services. Simply fill up the form and send. All these services may be accessed online. However, if there's an instance where you feel the need to visit us personally, you may do so by dropping by at the second floor of the Building 1 of the College of Science at the main campus. Thank you. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Those are the services in Bicol University, Open University. And to give us the closing remarks, here is the Research and Extension Coordinator of BUOU, Dr. Ramon T. De Leon. The distance between the learner and the teacher has never been closer than it is now with the aid of technology. The challenge on time difference and work demand is not anymore a setback for institutions of learning and students pursuing further education. Open universities are there to bridge the gap. Good day everyone! To our school administrators, headed by our visionary and decisive president, Dr. Arnulfo M. Mascarinas, whose burning desire to make BUOU what an open university should, had motivated and pushed us all to shape up. Happy birthday, Sir Nolly. To the Dean of the Graduate School, Sir Herbert Rosana and the Bicol University Open University faculty and staff headed by our equally visionary and motivating Dean, Dr. Ram Lorino. At sa aming mga boss, the students of Bicol University Open University, magandang tanghali sa inyong lahat. And to our students from different parts of the world, anong oras man po kayo ngayon, binabati ko din po kayo. Aside from the personalities and student services that were presented today, one very important discussion is on the modality of the delivery of instruction in an open university. I hope that everyone understood that you are enrolled in an open university because we have challenges in coming together in common time and common place, unlike in the residential. And that is because of your work and life circumstances, distance, and time difference. In the open university, you should not expect live classes because you can attend to your class anytime, anywhere in your most convenient time. Sabi nga ni Ma'am Jane, it is a self-directed learning for mature students. Synchronous classes may be required by your FICs when necessary but it is not the norm. In closing, I also would like to let you know, our dear students, that your faculty in charge in your respective subjects are always available to guide and coach you whenever you need the same. Our contact informations are provided in your course guides and you can reach us out anytime in whatever means available in your end. Maraming salamat for joining us in this orientation and I hope that your concerns were addressed and able to identify the difference between an open university from the regular residential classes. 
Have a nice day everyone at maraming salamat po. Thank you Dr. De Leon. That concludes ladies and gentlemen our orientation for today. Please do not forget that on February 19, 9 o'clock in the morning, we will be having an orientation on learning management system. If you have questions, please send us a message on our official Facebook page at Bicol University Open University. You can also email us at bu-ou at bicol-u.edu.ph or you can call us through our hotline numbers. Please do not forget that we will also be having our open forum after this premiere. The credentials for the Zoom will be posted on our official Facebook page. This has been your moderator. I am Dr. Roldan Cabiles. Thank you very much for your attendance and good morning, everyone. This is the school we wish to sing of a school to honor and revere. A temple built by men of firmness of mold for you to walk with.